Here's a giant solifuge. It's going to just attack in there. And the morph is going to jump in front. We get to see what that morph was. It was just that whip quarter again from Hiroki. And a Jace Architect of Thought <laughs> is going to reveal a narcolepsy, a mana leak, and a swamp. So these are going to be separated into two piles. And Eakin's got to decide what he wants to give him. Looks like he's going to give him a swamp and a mana leak. Oop, nope, he's thinking about it. Mana leak or swamp narcolepsy. It's up to you. So we, do we know if David Kaplan did his first two rounds of uh, cube with his seven? Not sure. All right, so he took the mana leak. Can't play it this turn, though. But he can activate his Mishra's factory and attack for five. And that's going to drop Eakin down to nine. All of a sudden, he's on the defensive. That Shrine of Burning Rage is, is ticking ever upwards at seven already. But that's not enough to finish off Hiroki here as he's sitting at pretty nice 13. He's got his opponent on a two-turn clock. Now, there's two cards in hand for Eakin. He's going to take two more damage here, though, from Sacred Foundry. He's got something he wants to cast for five mana. And it's a Zealous Conscripts. Is he going to steal Jace? Nope, he's going to steal Skin Render. And he's going to attack... Both of them at Hiroki, and that's going to set up the win next turn with Shrine of Burning Rage. So unless Hiroki can find a way to kill Eakin or deal with that Shrine of Burning Rage, he's dead. He's going to activate Jace first to try to dig for something. He sees some sweet stuff, but nothing that, care that matters <coughs> in this situation. So he needs some type of a bounce spell. Okay, he cycled Undead Gladiator. He's just furiously digging for anything he can find. He's so close, but Zealous Conscripts was a massive damage swing for him, for Eakin. <laughs> and that's it. Rookie's forced to concede to the Shrine of Burning Rage. All right, well, I'm over here looking at the match between Dmitry Budakov and Oscar Jones. Uh, an enchantment on both sides of the table, but uh, Riftwing Cloudskates just bounced Phyrexian Arena, and opposition is going to lock down uh, the creatures available to Oscar Jones for attacking. So he's Substantial so he's creatures, at, too. So yeah, Tombstalker and a Skin Render. The Lake of the Dead is in play. So oh, he's at two? Yeah. Oh, man. So this is close. He cannot afford to tap Oscar's land. He's on the ragged edge here. The blue-black opposition deck. Oh. Wait, are those attacking? Yeah. Okay, well, he's got to play then. <laughs> he's looking for something. He's got something. Does he have... Because he's in a stable board state there. Right. But pretty sketchy. All right. Oh, wow. That's the answer. Dungeon Geist is quite the answer. And he can use his, uh, his other guy. Oh, he's going to tap down the Lake of the Dead. So he's going to trade. Well, no, the Dungeon Geist can also tap the Skin Render. Oh, yeah, true. And he does that. Oh, Can Oscar Jones man. close this game out? Can he find two last points of damage? Three and he's turn at, clock and he's right now. Right, he's a 13, so it's... What's he holding? Mesmeric Fiend. You get to see the two cards in his hand. He takes a Faith's Fetters. 
And these are attacking. It's going to drop him down to seven, and it does actually set up lethal next turn. Though that also means that Oscar can't, if, if Oscar doesn't cast any more creatures. I mean, he's already got six mana. I guess you want to keep him off of like nine mana. Or <laughs> wow. He takes it down on the off the back of opposition. Wow. Get him to two, but that's not enough. I'm checking back in over here with uh, DZY. He's got an active Elspeth Knight Aaron all the way up to seven. And a bunch of creatures facing down, well, nothing from Silenced One. There's a scavenging ooze that could get a little bigger here. Thanks to a Yavamaya Elder and a Borderland Ranger in the graveyard. There's also a Blastoderm that is ticked down to two uh, fading counters, but still very much active and very much hitting. Now, it has Shroud, so he can't give it plus three, plus three and flying with Elspeth, but he can do that to his other creatures. Silent Swan is thinking about his turn here. He has a Lotus Bloom to go along with six other mana. He's got four cards in hand, so it definitely feels like he has options here. And he needs to do something. He's at 12. Blastoderm's a big problem. And so is Elspeth. All right, Lotus Bloom gets sacked for three white mana. What's the play? Gideon Jura for Silence One is going to start things off. He doesn't really have anything worthwhile to kill right now. His Blastoderm has Shroud, so he can't do that. He can take out a Soldier or a Findhorn Elf, so it's just going to plus it up to eight and take a little bit of the pressure off of him. Does he have something that he can play as well, though, to get in the way? You know, you could... Maybe get in the way of the scavenging news or something like that. Force DZY to do something. Okay, well, a journey to nowhere. Looks like it's going to take out scavenging news here. And it does. And he's going to pass the turn back after that. So he's, he's forcing his opponent to use Elspeth to plus one, plus one to actually kill Gideon here as he's only got seven power on the table without it. So plus three, plus three, and flying is going to have to hit Finhorn Orbs, Finhorn Elves, Soldier, or Birds of Paradise if he wants to kill Gideon this turn. If he doesn't care, then he can just wait a turn. Make a Soldier. Right. DZY. Plays Maelstrom Pulse on Gideon. All right, so now you don't have to attack anything, and you can just battle in there for seven or even up to ten. And he doesn't make the soldier a 4-4 four, four and gets his opponent all the way down to two. And things are looking really good. So this game's almost over. As DZY looks poised to take it down here, he's lining up his creatures and sending them in. And that's the end of that game. <laughs> We're bringing up the next game for you guys right now.
and I got one right here. It looks like it's uh, Sam Party on the top, and he's playing against Arsenal Munch on the bottom, Sean McLaren. And, hey, it's a Phantasmal Bear. He's so happy. Put me in, coach. He made it. Phantasmal Bear got there? Yeah, he's in there. Party's playing him, and he's got a Rakdos Cackler to follow up, too, so two tutus for one mana. <laughs> are they wearing shirts, or are they skins? No, 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 you can't put a shirt on a Phantasmal Bear or it goes away. So it's, he's always skinned. Yeah. <laughs> it's such a beating. It is. And I'm pretty sure Rakdos Cackler the doesn't wear a shirt. supposed to be strong. <laughs> Dude, Why it's a 2-2 two -two so for skinny? one. It's a 2-2 two -two for one. All right. And it looks like uh, Sam is just going to pass the turn here with his Scalding Tarn Island Mountain up. So he's representing a counterspell of some sort as he's got a lot of pressure on his opponent on an early stage of the game here. Scalding Tarn's going to get sacked to just go get a basic island. Oh, he's got an end step play. Stagger shock you. That's going to be an entire turn off the clock if it resolves. It doesn't, though. It gets absorbed and, in fact, adds another Whoa. turn to the clock in the form of absorb. All right, Jace Bellerin. One of the better Planeswalkers ever made. It's going to draw Sam a card, and he's going to attack in there. Did he hit a land drop? No, he did not. So still stuck on three lands, but he's got five cards in hand. You know he's got a lot of st great stuff in his hand. What can the Arsenal Munch come up with? Well, he can come up with the Sphinx's Revelation for two. He does it on his turn, make sure it doesn't get countered. Jace is going to draw a card. That's going to prompt two attacks here. And a land drop? Question mark? Well, there's a Grim, Grim Lava Mancer, but again, no land drop. So just six cards, which is terrifying if you're on the other side of the table yeah. and you're low on life. Exactly, because you know he has six spells in hand, and once he hits that land, he's going to start windmilling, you know, Hell Riders and all types of stuff. And the worst part for Arsenal Munch is, is that he, he can't sit back. He's on a pretty, pretty nasty clock. All right. Uh, red, uh, Blue Elemental Blast is going to take out Grim Lava Master yeah. before that even gets going. Which seems okay. I mean, it's not like Sam's dumping stuff into the graveyard at this point. Both he players gonna are going to draw a card. Yeah, he's going to keep Jace Belair alive. there's lane four. <coughs> All right, move to the attack step. Phantasmal Bear, Rakdos, Cackler holding hands and dropping Arsenal Munch down to five here. That's just been all the damage, right? Yeah. The Stagger Shock uh, got got countered. All right. Firebolt. Do two damage to you. It's on the stack. Hinder. And it's going to get a, hindered. A great spell to play. On a flashback card? Yes. Yeah, put that on the bottom of your library, buddy. Yeah, what a, right. what a, what a great answer there. It really was. Because Lee mean, was one land away from still, him to be he's again. He's still at five. Yeah, but now it's his untap. He's got seven cards in hand for crying out loud. He's got to have something awesome he's here. He's got six mana. He's going to play a land. That'll be his seventh mana. Balance. Oh. Balance. There. That's what's going on, huh? Yeah, so one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. So he's going to have to lose a land to play the balance, but his hand's going to stay the same size, and those creatures are gone. Now, I will note here that balance is on the stack, and it has oh, resolved. Resolve. Yep. yep. All right, so you lose one island. You keep all your lands. Everybody keeps all their cards in hand, and those two creatures go away. Right, play, plays the land that he bounced last turn. And he's going to play an old man of the sea, which will prevent uh, future small threats. Nope, it's not going to. It's going to get essence scattered here. All right, so Sam's got six cards in hand and an active Jace Bellerin. He's going to use the minus ability from Jace to draw a card. That puts him at five lands, still six cards yeah, in and hand, he's and he's going to play a wake thrasher. So wow. that's, that's an instant kill right there. He's just playing all the cards that you see go around the table yeah. in so many drafts. You do? Yeah, you, yeah, you really do. You talk about that aggro blue-red deck. Yep. But it never happens. You don't see it very often. All right, Cloud cloud uh, Goat Ranger. Oh, it's going to get remanded here, and that could be game. If Arsenal Munch, he doesn't have anything. Wow. And that's the game. All right, do we have any other matches outstanding?
Johnny Hot Sauce. Okay. And here we see Johnny Hot Sauce. Oh, God. Without any, uh, oh, tapping out his white bordered lands to play Catastrophe. Taking out an Orin Viper, Krasali Pride Mage, hmm. and a Wicker Bow Elder. Looks like we had good timing on that one. Yeah. Pinus untaps. He could just uh, get in for five with his Raging Ravine here. Put for five? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, just put, put Johnny down to three. I like that. And he also has four cards in his hand, so he's probably got options, but not even having to use one of them up is pretty sweet. Doesn't look like that's what he's doing. Next game is underway, but no, nope. no, he's way. like I would much rather have this primeval. Tank. Oh, hey, that guy. You know, it's what does uh, that do? It's eight seventeen on uh, Eastern Standard Time. It's prime time. <laughs> no, I said that once, and everybody yelled at me. And whatever. <laughs> no, I didn't mean I cared. I just said it happened. Yeah. <laughs> Goes and gets a couple lands. What did he get? Oh, we a couple of uh, the old school fetch lands. Oh, just one of them in a shrine. Okay. But here comes Kega. Oh. By the way, uh, Sam Party versus uh, Arsenal Munch. Th they're back underway here again. Um, early stages of the game. Sure. Desperate ravings in the blue red deck. I, I love this blue yeah, red deck. Yeah, this deck is awesome. He's also got opposition, obviously, we talked about. Mm -hmm. He had his cackler blue elemental blasted. Seems seems good considering how much damage it did last game. Yeah. Yeah, it, it did like eight. Ninja sighting. Uh oh. Ninja of the Deep Hours is being ninjutsued in here. For Sam Party, his deck is officially the coolest one. Yeah, it's my it, like, it's it's definitely my favorite deck. Here. Yeah. True is it champion here. Wow. Replace Geopede. All right, meanwhile over here. A little bit of a stare like, down like, between two beasts. What happens if I attack my Primeval Titan into his cave? He just gets a Primeval Titan? <laughs> this seems terrible. He still has that Raging Ravine. Well, that's even worse. And he's like, I lose my Raging Ravine and he gets my Primeval Titan. <laughs> <laughs> oh. How I'm about a huge Primeval Titan? Oh, man. Elspeth Knight Errant comes down. So we could see a 9-9, nine -nine, but again, he'd still lose his Primeval Titan. Uh-huh. But he would be, uh, but he can get him down to four here. And then it would be Raging Ravine versus Primeval Titan, and Primetime wins that one. Yes. Of course, Sam Party yes, has Prophetic Bolt as well. Cause oh, yes. Because why wouldn't I you love in that your deck. blue red deck? Okay, so we make a soldier token. We play Awakening Zone. Pinus passes the turn. Ooh, Unwilling to will. lose his Primeval Titan. So he just made a dude? He just made a dude. Here comes Garrick. What is that going to do? Take well, out let me soldier? tell you something. This could get ugly really quick. How come? Well, let's say he just uh, flips his Garrick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, does three damage to say this soldier token. Yeah, that's exactly what he did. Yep. He can sack Kaga next turn. Next turn, he can sack Kaga. Go get the best creature in his deck. Uh huh. The other best creature in his and deck. <laughs> and steal. Make a mess Titan. out of yeah the primeval <laughs> oh, Titan. Oh man. Oh, and there's a wall of blossoms. <laughs> also, a reasonable sack outlet, if you would yes. like to uh, go get the other best creature in your deck. Pinus is at twenty though. A Johnny Hot Sauce is sitting at eight. Awakening Zone's going to make an Eldrazi spawn. Let's see if it has a picture. Oh, bummer. Yeah. That one's the worst. There's a little swirly thing in the middle of it. Yeah, that means he has summoning sickness. 
You can still sack him. Can't attack, though. We haven't uh, sacrificed the No, he hasn't, he hasn't done that yet. I, I don't know why. He left it up last turn. I think he was going to do it on end step, but he decided not to. Or he forgot. Both are possible. Yeah. All right. Making a play. Tap, tap, tap. Whoa, what is he doing? Sacrifice this. Yeah, he went and got a mountain, but he's got a ton of mana here. You see over here all the mana he's got in his pool. Is that eight mana? What is this? Don't know. Court or Devil's Play or? Devil's Play would be fine. Yeah. <coughs> it wouldn't be lethal though, would it? Well, he could sack his Wall of Blossoms. Bonfire of the Damned. For four? And then he can make his Primeval Titan lethal? Well, except he's going to... Oh yes, he can he can yes, jump yes, it with yes. Elspeth and then that's the damage exactly, on. That's exactly what's gonna happen. Yeah, so he's gonna kill him here. Right. Important that he doesn't do it for five. Yes. <laughs> Although I guess he yeah. couldn't have anyway, but. Well, he could have sacked an Eldrazi spawn. Well, he needed two more mana though, right? Oh yes, yes, you're yeah. right. You're right. Yeah, so now he can just be, give plus three plus three to his Primeval Titan, make sure that he attacks Johnny Hot Sauce, and he'll win. Who attack who? I, I don't say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> and here it is, a 9-9 nine, nine Primeval Titan. Now, the reason why he's going to be able to win is he only has to do lethal damage to the creature. That's only one, and all the rest can carry over yeah, to... Yeah, the remaining eight. Johnny Hot Sauce. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my match just... Er, I think I think that might be the last one there. I don't, I don't, want, I don't want to call it too soon, but... Okay. Kaga gets in the way. Primeval Titan.